Hey, good afternoon from the farmer's garden. I'm one of the farmers and this is our garden. I'm out checking right now. Um, just kind of trying to get an idea what all I need to be working on. I spent the morning making jelly and so I've only been at the farm for a little bit. I'm try just trying to kind of wrap my head around what I need to be working on right now. Uh, so I just kind of wanted to show you guys how everything is looking. Um, it looks like we've got two crops that we're going to have to decide whether or not we're going to keep messing with them or if we'll plow them out and put something new in their place. Uh, what happened is these went in after the May rain quit and before this July rain started and they were getting irrigated, but irrigation and rain is not the same thing. And so we didn't get a good stand. They didn't come up like they need to. And so we're just trying to decide, will we leave them and get what we get? Or will we take them out and focus our energy on something that might do better? Anyways, I'm going to turn the camera around and kind of show you all the garden. So there's the two that we might take out. And then the watermelon are looking amazing. So I want to show you that. Um, and we'll just give you a good update on how everything is looking. Okay, so... This is one of the crops that we're thinking about taking out. Can you see a crop in there? Yeah, me neither. All right, so the weeds are perfectly happy to just wait and come up whenever the rain comes. Uh, the okra, on the other hand, whoops, shadow. The okra, um, once the seed goes in the ground, it goes ahead and tries to sprout, and then you just kind of get what you get. Now, we do have some more that did try to come up when the rain came, but it, it may be too little too late to decide to save this. So just walking through here, it's all very small. We're obviously gonna have to get the weeds out of it if we keep it. Um, down on this end, it looks a little better. You can see this is, oh, nine or 10 inches tall. So it's a little better. Um, so just walking through here, it's not looking great. Uh, we may be able to get the weeds out. Like I say, there's a couple more that tried to come on up when the rain did start. So maybe it's not a total loss, but it certainly doesn't look great. This row right beside it planted the same day, but peas, peas are an amazing food source. Um, cow peas, purple hole peas, black eyed peas, whatever you want to call them. These actually originated in Africa. Uh, that's, that's where the first wild pea seeds were found. Um, and so they're just super drought tolerant. I was just reading about that the other day. I thought it was really interesting. Um, they're super drought tolerant and they're just a really good source of nutrients actually. But they're doing a really good job. They came on up even though it was dry. The corn actually came up better than we thought it would. The corn is looking decent. Uh, another row of peas here. Again, looking amazing. But then if I step over that one, we have another row. And this one we already have determined we will be taking out for sure. This one was supposed to be pinto beans. And you can see some of them came up. There's one there. Here's one. But you need a lot of pinto beans to be able to harvest anything. Um, to, or to harvest enough to make it worth your time, I should say. And so we're just going to take this one out. This is probably the row that fall tomatoes will go in. Um, it's a bummer. The seed went in the ground and then we didn't actually get to harvest it. So that's frustrating. But it's also part of farming. All right. Next row over is squash. And it looks like I need to fertilize it again. So I'll go do that here in a few minutes. Like this one's kind of yellow and not looking great. So I will fertilize again. These are looking better. There's even some little squash in there, so that's exciting. <coughs> Alright, now we switch over to zucchini. And zucchini goes all the way to the end of the garden. You can see it's looking good. I actually picked some zucchini off of this yesterday. It was the first time we picked this. Um, it's been in the ground for about five weeks, so that's a pretty good deal to already be picking. Right beside that is the watermelon. I told you watermelon was looking good. Um, it is not disappointing. I think I've mentioned before that we had planted some watermelon, hoping to have some by the 4th. That's like market farmers 
dream is to have fresh watermelon by 4th of July. And the rain and the little bit cooler temperatures in May did not cooperate with us and we ended up losing that entire planting. But this one is blooming for sure. I have not seen any melons yet, but I feel like they may be in there just hiding. It's so thick, I'm not sure I would know right away if there were melons. Um, so it's trying to take over the zucchini. It's trying to take over the spaghetti squash. It's just doing really good. And I will definitely be watching for melons and be posting pictures as soon as we start finding those. Um, and these will be Charleston Gray melons. That's the seed that we already had on hand. And so that's what we planted this year. Uh, this end of this row is cantaloupe. And the cantaloupe is not looking nearly as good as the watermelon. It's kind of disappointing. Um, I actually like cantaloupe better, so this is really sad to me. But there's one trying to bloom. It's trying to do its thing. I'll get the weeds out of it and we'll fertilize it again and see how it does. All right, then this is second planting of spaghetti squash. This is not what I weeded yesterday. It didn't get that bad again overnight. It needs to be weeded. Okay, so these two rows, I think this is, no, this is run, one row, sorry. This row was left from when we had cabbage and cauliflower and all that in, so this is really not anything in here. There were some experimental tomatoes, but we've already determined that those are not making this year, so those will get taken out. Then we make it to tomatoes. Told you guys about staking them up. Um, we did finally get the rest of them staked yesterday, so they're looking good. Next is eggplant, if you like eggplant. This is your week, because there's a bunch coming. I won't go all the way down the row, but there's a bunch of eggplant. That end of the row is peppers, it obviously needs to be weeded. This is the spaghetti squash I weeded yesterday. And then our first planting of yellow squash is still producing. And our first planting of zucchini is still producing. And then cucumbers are right over there and they're still making as well. So it looks like what I need to get done is some fertilizing and some weeding. It's pretty hot this afternoon, so I'm not sure how much weeding I'll get done, but I will get the fertilizing done. And... Then I will check back in when it's time to pick. All right, I'm getting the fertilizer ready now. Uh, we do, for right now, we do a water-soluble fertilizer in a watering can. Obviously, um, that is only going to work for just so long because as our garden gets bigger each year, uh, the, the uh, watering can is going to we're going to outgrow it pretty fast. Uh, but it works for now. So it's a bit of a hike back and forth to fill it up. But I fill it up. And then I just come out and walk down each row. It usually takes roughly a can per row. Um, and so I do that for each row to make sure everybody gets fertilized. Okay, so I am going to skip the row of okra today until I get it weeded and determine whether or not it's enough to save. Um, so I'm going to start here with the corn. These are planted in double rows along the drip tape. So I'm going to just go down one side instead of down both sides and it will kind of split the nutrients. We are not fertilizing the peas right now. They seem to be doing okay without it, but corn likes a heavy dose. So I'm going to use about the whole can on this corn, which was, it's approximately half the row. Not quite, but pretty close. All right, so that's not quite a full can, but pretty close. And so that gets the corn taken care of. And I'll just do that same thing for each row as I go through, and then we'll call it all fertilized. Okay, I finished fertilizing. And um, after looking at the okra again, we decided to keep it. So I have weeded the okra, and now I'm going to pick. Uh, picking is one of my favorite parts. It's also one of my least favorite parts. <laughs> it's cool to see everything come in, but it also gets kind of old because 
there's a lot of bending and stooping involved in the picking part. All right, so I'm going to turn the camera around so that you can see the okra that's weeded out and see there's there's honestly not much there uh we'll just see how it does but i'll turn it around and let you ta-da weeded row okay so yeah not a lot there uh, we'll see how it does with irrigation um maybe we'll get some okra maybe we won't the first planting that's down behind the goat pen is still doing okay again corn peas Oh, it's thundering. I'd love a shower. Um, beans, I said, are going to go. So zucchini. Now, we pick our zucchini uh, slightly smaller than what you find in the grocery store. I try to pick everything like I would want it picked if I was eating it. This one is shorter than I would normally do. But for whatever reason, this one has decided to only get fat and not long. And so I'm just going to leave it. Um... So, like I say, we just started picking these uh, yesterday, I think, was the first picking. Here's another one that's not really getting very long. I, it's probably a pollination situation. That's usually what it is when they get an odd shape to them. They're either really short or um, kind of roundish. Like, they'll, they'll get really goofy if they're not pollinated well. So, the zucchini is looking great. Um, I believe this is called Contender. I think that's what it is. We've really liked it. Alright, so this is the switch to yellow squash. And the yellow squash is a little further behind, so I'm not even going to walk all the way through it. I'm going to head over here to tomatoes. And we'll get started picking that. Okay, so these are the little artisan tomatoes that so many of you like and they're actually looking a little better now that they're propped up off the ground these are really prone to splitting though and that's made worse because of their location in the garden uh, these are at the end of the line and because we use drip irrigation <coughs> sorry because we use drip irrigation this end tends to get more water than the top end, and so these are splitting really bad, which is a bummer. But the ones that make have been really tasty. See, there's another split one. That's very frustrating. So anyways, I'm just going to pick tomatoes for a while, and then I'll move on to squash and all the other goodies. Okay, we're back in from picking. And now everything gets to just kind of sit on the patio for a few minutes. On super hot days, we also turn a fan on them. But today I'm just going to let them sit here in the shade. And that will let some of that heat, uh, field heat come off of them. So that they're not quite as warm when I put them in the trailer. Uh, and we'll get them all sorted and moved in there in just a second. Now it's time to go feed chickens. Okay, next part of the day is feeding the chickens. I just fed the goats. Harder to do that with one hand. All right, so we have been watering our chickens with these three uh, three gallon waterers. Nine gallons a day was not enough. So we have swapped to this um, automatic, it's actually a dog water bowl, but the chickens can drink out of it just fine. You can see they've all figured it out. And we've swapped to that and that makes sure that nobody's running out of water during the day. Um, keeps us from having to make an extra trip out and check and make sure that they have plenty of water. But I am dumping it out every night because as you can see, chickens are messy little critters. So, we'll just kind of swish that, get some of that out of there so that their water will be cleaner. That'll fill back up, automatic shut off. Uh, we're having a very hard time getting exactly the right amount of food out lately. Um, as the hens mature, they kind of hit a spot where they're not eating much, and then they're hungry again, and so kind of a balancing act. This is where we keep our feed. It holds um, 150 pounds, and we have to refill it every week. Uh, we go through three sacks of feed in about six days, actually. Not quite seven. 
So these, you can see they didn't eat much last night, so I'm not gonna put a whole lot more in. I try not to keep too much food out because it gets stale and or attracts extra animals to eat it, and we don't want that either. This gal is just gonna go right to the source of the feed here. Excuse you, can I have some of that? Thank you. So we've got four different feeders. Um, there's actually all kinds of calculations and math on how many feeders you're supposed to have per bird. Um, I'm not sure we have quite enough, actually, if I'm being real honest. But this seems to work well in our situation. Nobody's going hungry. We don't have anybody that's being henpecked real bad, which is the biggest concern if you don't have enough feeders. So we'll get them fed and then I'll collect egg. All right, I finished feeding. Now I'm gonna check for eggs. This nest box, they actually don't use much. Um, chickens are real particular about the lighting in their nest box. And this one, they're not real fond of. Although I do see two eggs tonight. Um, oh, okay, cool. This is a neat example. All right, so this, if I can show you, this is actually a fake egg. This is a ceramic egg. Not gonna break, right? Um, and so Brandon tossed it in there the other night and one of our little Easter eggers already found it and said, hey, cool, it's a nest, I'll put an egg in it. And so that's where she laid tonight. Right after I just said they didn't like that one. All right, excuse me girls. This old lady likes to sit in here and set on the eggs. You can see we need more nesting material. Uh, they were out the last time we made a feed store run. So we're gonna have to go back to the feed store. But I just said we have to do that all the time anyway. So what I'll do is I'll collect all these, um, take my basket back up to the house, and then get them washed. We actually had two really nasty eggs today. Um, like I say, we need more nesting stuff. I've gotta go get some this week. Um, when their nesting material isn't thick enough, they tend to step on the eggs and crush them. I don't like to take these inside. I could wash them. Uh, if I was eating them just myself, I probably would, but I don't like to do that because I can't keep that straight and I don't want to sell them that way. So I'll actually end up just throwing these back and the chickens will eat them. I crack them first, throw them out, and then they'll eat that and that will be extra protein and calcium for the chicken. All right, so I've got the eggs gathered up. We got a bunch tonight. I'm gonna to get them washed and then I lay them out for a few minutes to dry and then I get them in the garden. So first we wash them. Uh, you're supposed to do it in about 90 degree water. We have not actually been washing ours up until very recently. Um, an eggshell is naturally protective against bacteria, but we are working towards trying to become I guess the word is licensed egg producers. And so washing the eggs is part of that whole thing. So we're just kind of getting in the habit of doing that now. And I'm sure as we um, get the licenses and everything, I'll probably find out I'm doing part of this wrong um, because laws are fun that way. It's hard to keep up. But anyways, I'll just get all of these washed and then we'll get them in cartons and get them put in the fridge. Eggs are all put up for the day. We got 39 today. So those are all put away. Next job is to sort the veggies and put them in the trailer. So Brandon went and picked okra while I was feeding. So we've got that. We've got the squash and we've got the tomatoes. And all of these go into our trailer. When you hear us talk about the trailer, it's this lovely little box trailer. Actually, it's not special at all, um, but it's got an air conditioner and something called a cool bot. Oh, much better. Okay, so this actually completely froze over yesterday. This was solid ice, and we had to take everything out, take it in the house for the night, let that thaw, and then we finally got it turned back on this afternoon. We lost 
quite a bit of tomatoes, but we didn't lose any squash or onions or anything like that. Um, it was 70, I think, when I started putting stuff back in an hour and a half or so ago. So this is much better. All right, so okra first. Okra likes it hot. So when our trailer gets down in the 50s, we find that the okra dries out and shrivels up. We have found that if we tuck it in with a blanket, that helps. I know that's not the professional way to do that. I know that. But it works well for us, and so we're gonna use that method around here. Same thing with peppers. They don't like it too cold, and so they kind of get shriveled up, so we tuck them in with a blanket, and that helps. I am trying that with squash as well. So I've got both kinds of squash, yellow and zucchini, and I've got cucumbers in here as well because our trailer is small, so I have to make sure that I make the most use out of the space. So there's that. There's cucumbers, two more zucchinis, and then we'll kind of tuck them back in under their blankets. So I need two hands to sort the tomatoes, but I'll get that sorted. And pretty much that's like <laughs> three hours in the afternoon of a farmer. I'm gonna get the tomatoes sorted and put away. Um, and then I'm gonna call it an afternoon and go home. Um, I hope you guys learned something by watching today. That's always the goal, whether it's on YouTube or Facebook. We always want to make sure that you're learning something about how your food is raised. That's, um, that's our passion. We wanna make sure that you know your farmers and you know how your food was grown. So I hope you learned something. Be sure and like and subscribe to the channel so that you can always stay tuned to what's going on. And be sure and come back when you can stay longer.